Since childhood, we've been told everything's made of atoms. We've all seen those models with electrons swirling around, but have you ever paused to wonder, how can we be so sure about something that can't actually be seen with our own eyes? Were we possibly misled? What if the atom holds more mysteries than we ever imagined? And what if I told you that in today's world, we're on the brink of truly seeing them? Let's dive deep into the unseen and challenge what we think we know. How do we know that atoms exist if we can't see them? Throughout time, humans have looked at the vastness of the skies and the intricacies of nature and wondered, what is it all made of? But a select few didn't just wonder, they sought answers journey back to ancient Greece. Here, a philosopher named Democritus pondered over a thought experiment. If you kept cutting an object, at what point would it be so small that it couldn't be cut any further? He believed such a point existed, naming it Atomos, uncuttable. Fast forward to the 19th century. As the world celebrated advancements like steam engines and electricity, some scientists, equipped with rudimentary microscopes, were trying to catch a glimpse of these atomos. But the atom remained a shadow, teasing their curiosity. As centuries passed, the 19th century ushered in tools that could magnify the unseen. Even as scientists observed the tiniest of creatures with these early microscopes, atoms eluded their gaze. However, they had tools other than sight, the power of deduction and experimentation. For instance, consider how gases behave. When measured under consistent conditions of temperature and pressure, equal volumes of different gases contain an equal number of particles whether they're atoms or molecules. This observation, known as Avogadro's principle, gave scientists a way to compare the relative sizes and masses of atoms. By understanding how much volume our known amount of a gas occupies and knowing the number of particles in that volume, they could make inferences about the average size of those particles. In this realm, of deduction and experimentation, John Dalton made a pivotal contribution. In one of his notable studies, Dalton observed the formation of water. When hydrogen gas reacted with oxygen gas, water was produced. Dalton envisioned atoms as miniature indivisible beads. Imagine needing two beads of hydrogen to match one bead of oxygen to craft the molecule of water. This bead analogy illuminated a world where every element had its unique atomic bead, each with its distinct weight. Dalton's insights ignited a scientific revolution. He laid the foundation for the atomic theory, suggesting that each element was composed of unique atoms, consistent in weight and behavior. But to truly visualize atoms, scientists needed more than just theories. They yearned for tangible evidence, enter a peculiar dance that would hint at the unseen. Under the lens of his microscope, botanist Robert Brown observed pollen grains in water moving in an erratic dance. This wasn't some choreographed performance. It was as if these grains were being nudged by unseen dancers. Albert Einstein stepped into this waltz of the microscopic. He theorized that invisible water molecules in their ceaseless motion were bumping into the pollen grains, setting them into their whimsical dance. This hinted at a world beneath the world teeming with atomic energy. With every revelation, the universe of the atom seemed even more mesmerizing. But the 19th century 
had more surprises he tucked up its sleeve. Enter J.J. Thompson. Drawn to the enigmatic cathode rays, he made a discovery that would shatter the notion of the indivisible atom. Thompson found these rays were streams of particles, each carrying a negative charge. These electrons were much tinier than atoms, hinting at a universe within the atom. This revelation reshaped our atomic understanding. If atoms housed these tiny electrons, what else lay within? Thompson proposed a plum pudding model, likening atoms to positive spheres studded with electron plums. But the atomic story was far from complete. Questions loomed. Where was the atom's positive charge concentrated? Were there more subatomic particles? The narrative took another twist with Rutherford's experiments. Firing alpha particles at gold foil, he found some deflecting back, as if hitting an atomic wall. This wall was the nucleus, revealing the atom's heart. From being envisioned as uncuttable spheres to dynamic solar systems in miniature, atoms' portrayal was ever-evolving. Quantum mechanics added more layers, suggesting atoms weren't just tangible entities, but also clouds of probabilities. The 20th century brought us tools like the electron microscope, not to view atoms directly, but to offer glimpses of their shadowy impressions. Like understanding an artist through their brush strokes, this technology didn't show us atoms as we see grains of sand on a beach, but rather provided a way to observe their influence on larger particles, piecing together their shape and behavior from mere glimpses of the ultra-tiny. Even today, the atom holds secrets. The dance of quantum fields, the enigma of string theory, the mysteries of dark matter, all remind us of the wonders yet to be unveiled. So the next time you marvel at a starlit sky or the intricate design of a leaf, remember, every bit of the universe, every grain of sand, every breath we take has a story. The story of the atom of discovery, of insatiable curiosity, and the dance goes on. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, click the like button and subscribe to see future videos. Please let us know in the comments what you would like to see next.